I'm honored to be here and very excited to share with you what we at Texas A&M's Center of Digital Humanities Research, or CODER, have been working on in um, collaboration with the Modern Language Association and the NVS Board. Um, in 2019, the MLA uh, granted us um, a generous amount of money to put the digital editions, or actually the uh, NVS editions, online, making them freely available to scholars, educators, students, and performers via an open access interactive web application. The digital NVS editions that I'm about to show you contain the complete text of each play along with a full collation um, of textual notes from the earliest editions to the present, including extensive previous commentary. And this is a screenshot of our homepage. But before I talk about this web application, I want to provide a bit of background about the project itself. So first, the word variorum is Latin for of various entities and derives from the fra uh, Latin phrase editio cum notis variorum, with notes by various people. And a variorum is a work that sets all variations and emendations side by side so that a reader can track how textual decisions have been made in preparation of a text for publication, helping editors and scholars understand the historical evolution of Shakespeare texts. And it was uh, Hor uh, Horace Howard Furness, uh, the gentleman pictured here, who published the first new variorum edition of Shakespeare, starting with Romeo and Juliet uh, in 1871. So this set the design for the format, um, or the format of the editions that we're currently working on. Dr. Furness's work was con um, continued by his son, and subsequently issued under the sponsorship of the Modern Language As Association from 1936 to 2019, and that's when we took over to start publishing these volumes digitally. Some of the uh, MLA editions have since been XML encoded for digital publication, allowing readers to download the play from a CD um, attached to the physical volume in order to get a, a PDF version of that volume. Uh, and it's now our job at Coder to take all of these editions, including the uh, ones that have been XML encoded, and put them online so that they're freely available to a wide range of users. We're also working with new editors who wish to use our back end to build their editions digitally, start to finish. So this is a typical page in a physical variorum volume. This is another view, and it includes three sections. Uh, the very top section is the play text, the middle section are the textual notes, and the last section that continues on to the next page are the commentary notes. And after these sections come the bibliography, appendix, and index, not pictured here. So as you can see, uh, it's all quite detailed. Um, the Winter's Tale volume alone is 973 pages plus front matter. So one can see how an editor can dedicate his or her entire life to a single volume and why many even fail to complete a volume within a single lifetime. This application, however, will enable new editors to create their editions using the web application's backend called Corpora more quickly and accurately than ever before because they'll have access to tools that'll help them collate text and check them with greater speed and accuracy. In other words, new editors will not have to create a physical volume anymore. In the future, everything will be born digital, hopefully simplifying the uh, variorum building process. Our homepage features two NVS editions that are now available online, The Winter's Tale and A Midsummer Night's Dream, along with title pages for editions that are currently in production, and those are the ones that are grayed out. Clicking on a page's or uh, play's title card will give you access to the um, edition's content, including our variorum reader pictured here. Um, our information pages can also be accessed on the menu bar of the home page. And if you're curious about what we're working on in the future, then you can visit our tools and development page. So now I will show you the main feature, which is our variorum reader. Um, it has three panels. The play text is in the middle, commentary notes is, um, are in the right panel, and textual notes are on the left panel. And um, in the middle panel, right after to the right of the play text, you'll see uh, line numbers, um, as well as a mini map that shows users where they are in the play, and um, act and scene numbers that can be clicked on in order to get to different points in the play. The uh, play text and commentary notes panels can scroll independently in their own frames or sync up when clicking on a line or word in either the play text or commentary notes panels. Um, the commentary notes in the right panel include um, cross-reference links to bibliographic entries, play text lines, front matter, other commentary notes, and the appendix. Cross-references appear in pop-up modals that can be repositioned and closed, and they also include diagonal arrows um, that open the line referenced or the section referenced in a new tab. 
The next feature of the Variorum Reader, and I think the one we're proudest of, is the textual notes panel, which is on the left. Um, uh, the textual notes have long been identified as the band of terror, which I'll explain in a moment in the print editions, because they're written in this kind of crazy shorthand in order to save space. We don't have to worry about that anymore, but that's a particularly hairy um, commentary, um, sorry, textual note. So um, to unpack that a little bit, um, this is a list of all of the editions that have been collated for A Winter's Tale. And, um, all of these editions are the most important editions of the Winter's Tale going through time, starting with the first folio in 1623. So all of these editions have been compared against that first folio or the copy text line by line, word by word, and character by character. And um, the Band of Terror, this is another hairy one, uh, records all of the variants in the editions that have been compared to the 1623 copy text in this kind of shorthand that makes reading it difficult for anyone who's not familiar with variorums. Our interface, however, um, visualizes these uh, textual notes as a histogram in the left panel and records all the variants across editions in chronological order, showcasing uh, different textual variants in a color-coded sidebar that can be expanded by clicking on disclosure triangles, and in an expanded note, clicking on signal markers, or those little uh, words on the very left, like call two, um, brings up all of the editions um, that include that variant in question, along with their bibliographic information. So let's take a quick look at how to read one of the textual notes in our histogram. This textual note uh, records the fact that in line 647, which reads, he has discovered my design and I in the first folio or copy text, is marked in a, as an aside in Collier's, or Call 2, uh, 1853 edition, and in Row 1 through Johnson 2, or Nicholas Rowe's 1709 edition, following through Johnson's 1765 edition of The Winter's Tale, and again, in the very RM 1773 through Malone, um, that those include the variant spelling of H-A-T-H marked out by orange instead of the H-A apostrophe S in the original copy text. Um, and so all other uh, collated editions represented by gray bars here uh, revert back to the original H-A apostrophe S spelling. So there's no more shorthand. Uh, you could just click on the histogram to see what the variants look like and see exactly which editions include those variants. The Variorum, Variorum Reader also um, has a search function that allows users to search by line number or keyword. And um, to wrap things up a little bit here, um, now that we've launched two volumes in beta, we have a lot more work ahead of us. Um, we're now in phase two of the project, where we're working on usability and accessibility issues in order to move out of beta. We're continuing to put physical NVS volumes online, as we've done with The Winter's Tale and uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, and we're working with new editors who are just beginning to create NVS editions to create their born digital editions directly in the back end of, our, um, of the NVS, and that back end is called Corpora Dataset Studio, developed by uh, Dr. Brian Tarpley, and uh, Corpora will be released as an open source software with documentation in August 2024, thanks to funding from the Linked Infrastructure for Network Cultural Scholarship, or LINCS. Um, and we wish to further enhance Corpora by adding TEI XML editing capacity uh, through LeafWriter, which is an open source tool for properly encoding XML documents according to any project schema or encoding rules. And this will allow us to publish these volumes online. We also want to create an updated version of Tesseract, the open source OCR software. And we're improving um, a new version of TypeWrite, the OCR correction tool. And again, all of these tools will help new editors create born digital volumes. And then finally, in the next phase, I don't know when that will begin, but it's phase three of the project in the distant future, we're working on visualizations and making the NVS interoperable with and allowing access to other major Shakespeare digital resources, including biographies or bibliographies of criticism, digital copies of editions published since Shakespeare's time, images and videos. So more to come, feel free to uh, check out our website at this address and thank you for being here.